the moon, we played with ciphers, and some said that this road leads to liberty. We became cypherpunks, and we have won for now. Welcome to MoneroCon and the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. I'm here to talk about. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk about uh, the past, present, and future of cypherpunk. Uh, to many, cypherpunk uh, sounds uh, dystopian, uh, and uh, I'm here to tell you that uh, I think we have a very bright future. So, uh, what is cypherpunk uh, and who are cypherpunks? Cypherpunks are people who play with ciphers and they decided to bring um, and realize this uh, uh, strategy of crypto anarchy. So, contrary to many philosophies uh, about liberty, uh, crypto anarchy is not so much a philosophy, but a strategy. That means it's a set of tools that you can use in your day-to-day -day life to increase your liberty today. You don't need to wait for the world to change. You don't need uh, uh, to enact um, uh, political change or anything like that. There is no revolution. You just uh, do it yourself, uh, run your own node, uh, build your computers, and uh, use all these tools to, um, uh, to be a little bit more free in many areas of life. Uh, so, uh, cypherpunks have been researching these cryptographic primitives and writing code to uh, help us get some of these liberties. Uh, one of them is private communication. Uh, that this is achieved, of course, through encryption. Censorship resistance uh, by using decentralized networks and peer-to-peer uh, -peer technologies. Anonymity. Uh, mix masters in the in the past, uh, onion routing, and many other ways how to achieve anonymity. Uh, electronic cash, of course. Of first, there were e-cash projects, then Bitcoin, Monero, and many other um, projects that uh, try to uh, bring us electronic cash. Decentralized file sharing, uh, BitTorrent, whatever IPFS, uh, many other projects, uh, permissionless social networks, uh, such as Nostr. Um, and there are seeds of anonymous coordination using zero-knowledge proofs, reputation, escrow systems, and so on. So these cypherpunks, they've been playing with all these technologies. Uh, the uh, most challenging actually turned out to be the electronic cache. Uh, but we have uh, not solved all these problems yet. Uh, but we have come really, really far. So, what is it for? Uh, so, how does some software, some some uh, something you can run on your computer or on on your phone, actually bring you more liberty? So, the strategy is very simple. Uh, it is by detaching your physical body from some of your actions through anonymity. Uh, only physical bodies can be put to jail. Uh, public keys, so they don't have jails for them now, although they put them on some lists. <laughs> uh, so this is the key strategy. If you have anonymity uh, in some of your actions, you get more liberty by not revealing your identity, which is the only thing that can be put in jail. Um, also, of course, it is nice uh, to be able to speak freely also achieved by anonymity and censorship resistance technologies. This turned out to be very important and very useful, uh, especially during the last few years where uh, the uh, uh, fight against uh, free expression has been uh, booming uh, by the states, but also by private networks. Uh, and of course, uh, being able to transact freely increases your liberty, especially if you are in a country that has capital controls or any other things. Uh, with electronic money, uh, this, is, uh, this is possible. And uh, if this electronic money is not debased by the central banks, it's even better. So that's it. We have done it. Goodbye. Let's go home. Let's celebrate. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> So this is where we are. This is the present. Um, 
What is nice about the present is that we no longer have to prove that we are right. We know it because we use it every day and it works. Uh, so there really is a reason for celebration. But there has been a change in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the society and uh, in uh, the importance and in the weight of this strategy. Um, you can see this is, the, uh, this is the list of all the reserve assets in the world. So I am, I am saying M0. So uh, if it's a fiat currency, it's uh, cash notes, banknotes, coins, and uh, deposits at the central bank, not deposits in the banks. So everything that is not a uh, counterparty uh, promise. And uh, Bitcoin, which I think is a cypherpunk project, uh, is number six. I'm not saying this because, you know, it's the moon and we are all rich and so on, but uh, it, has, uh, um, it has changed the game. Uh, this software, written by some anonymous punk, <laughs> is the sixth largest uh, reserve asset in the world. And that is... Uh, what has changed, and uh, that is, I think, one of the reasons uh, uh, that uh, uh, things that are happening, such as arrests of uh, cypherpunks and people who are working on privacy are happening. Um, of course, you, I could have chosen a different measure, I could have included stock and so on, uh, but Bitcoin really is a reserve asset, it's not a, a third-party um, uh, obligation. Uh, so, uh, so I think this just shows the magnitude uh, and, the, and the success that, uh, that happened in this area. So imagine a cypherpunk comes to a bar, or in this case, a cocktail party of super rich people. And uh, there are, of course, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, you, uh, the cypherpunk talks to the entrepreneurs and uh, uh, they are uh, thinking, contemplating of what, uh, about what they should work on, uh, what uh, they should build. Uh, the entrepreneurs usually uh, got there uh, in a very specific way, uh, which is basically front-running the money printing. So there's a lot of regulatory capture, a lot of it was built on borrowed or printed money, venture capital, and so on. But then, from far, there's a different kind of person, uh, a politician, maybe a senator, maybe her name is Elizabeth, and uh, she yells at the guy like, who are you? We don't, we don't know you. We uh, didn't allow you to be here, and you didn't go to the school with us uh, or our children. You didn't attend Harvard. You didn't attend... Uh, um, Yale or uh, any other of these fancy universities and uh, you didn't follow our rules, you didn't climb over our hierarchy. And uh, crypto anarchy as a strategy uh, to avoid uh, all these hierarchies and, uh, and uh, made up rules is uh, exactly the strategy how you can live your life and, uh, and not play their game. So the cypherpunk is not welcome, although uh, maybe uh, he is rich enough to, uh, to qualify for the cocktail party. Uh, he's definitely uh, someone who doesn't belong there. So this is our present. There are many people like this uh, and many more to come. Uh, but uh, we can see something different has happened. Like, uh, if this was uh, me 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, wearing the same hoodie uh, and uh, same anonymity technology, using my PGP uh, key and uh, encrypting and using the first uh, anonymization technologies, I would... I would uh, I would be absolutely out of place to come to this party. Uh, but we find ourselves in these places. So all these technologies, they have become important. And that is why I think we need to uh, start thinking a little bit differently because uh, 
I think we pissed some people off a little bit. All right, so what should we do? Um, there are some things from the Crypto Anarchy program that are still missing. Uh, first of all is true private peer-to-peer -peer markets. Uh, there are many interesting projects that try to build these, but they did not solve the network effects uh, and they did not solve marketing in, the, uh, in an anonymous way. It's a really hard problem. Uh, people usually don't like the word marketing, but if you are offering something, you need uh, your potential customers to know about you. And this is a really hard thing to do if you want to stay anonymous uh, in the, uh, at the same time. So I think a truly uh, anonymous peer-to-peer -peer markets with good reputation, without rug pulls and with network effects is something that needs to be done. Reputation, uh, reputation, especially uh, in a uh, cypherpunk way. So uh, somewhat uh, privacy preserving uh, is not a solved problem and it would be very useful if we have done something about it. And we need uh, better coordination. I think we can move the world if we can coordinate where do we want to move it. <laughs> Uh, so we should not run around and uh, uh, without coordination so much. Of course, uh, this also, uh, if we run around without coordination, there's a lot of experimentation, which is good. Another thing uh, I would uh, like to um, focus on is uh, thinking more about anonymity than privacy. Because everyone wants privacy, you know, uh, I, uh, I have switched to Graphene OS, I have all these uh, uh, plugins for blocking trackers and so on, and I get a little bit more privacy, but what does it mean? Is it, you know, I block 80% of the trackers on a website that I visit, or what is this privacy, or I do not share my location and so on. I think anonymity is a much better concept and practically, how to think about anonymity, I think, is you figure out in which interactions you want anonymity, uh, and you keep your anonymity in this kind of interaction. So let's say you want to write a software, uh, let's call it Tornado. And uh, what should you do in this case? Uh, yes, you can have privacy, so you can uh, you know, use your email address, but uh, create a pseudonymous GitHub account and commit it to, uh, to GitHub and then give uh, interviews in podcasts. You can maybe uh, cover your face, but your voice is still there and so on. This is privacy, you're increasing your privacy. Um, having anonymity means you write the software, under one-time uh, identity, you commit and then you leave. If there's a new change, uh, some new identity will come, it might be you, it might be someone else, you come, you commit the change, somehow, some, of course there needs to be some kind of approval or some kind of evolution of this project, but there is no single identity uh, that ties you to previous commits and uh, there is less room to make mistakes because you need to stay anonymous only for this one act. So it's not, I want to have a little bit more privacy in everything. No, I want to have 100% anonymity in this one thing that is important uh, uh, for me uh, to stay anonymous. So think about this concept. I think we need to find ways uh, how to uh, incentivize developers, for example, if they uh, want to stay anonymous and kind of do some kind of bounty thing or something like that. But I think this is something that we need to do because the game has changed and we have pissed some people at some fancy cocktail party. <laughs> um, another thing, uh, we do not need to build for normies. I'm not saying we have to exclude anyone. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, so we can bring in median people, but we don't have to uh, prove ourselves. We already know we are right. We don't have to explain to them that, uh, you know, uh, mining won't boil the oceans or anything like that. I think uh, we are way past that. If people want to use it, let them use it. If they don't want to use it, okay, use your CBDC or whatever you want. 
So I think the focus should be that our tools should be useful for us because we have a specific goal. We need more, we want more liberty. Another thing, um, in the uh, early cypherpunk <laughs> Days uh, we had, uh, we, we were doing everything uh, in, on the command line, and uh, we were using uh, these pipes, and these pipes were connecting different pieces of software. Uh, so this way, I'm uh, ordering uh, some unpasteurized milk uh, from my milk de dealer using email and GPG. If I want uh, this to be anonymous uh, or uh, uh, more private, uh, uh, then I will change the mail command for Mixmaster, but all the other commands stay the same. Uh, what I'm, where I'm going with this is there has been a lot of uh, fight uh, between, you know, Bitcoiners and is Lightning private and Monero and, you know, Ethereum uh, has all these capabilities and so on. And we forgot to build the pipes this pipe concept and this interaction of all these cypherpunk technologies is great. So uh, if someone uh, wants us to pay in Lightning and we have Monero, there are so many ways how to use this, so many pipes that we can use. We can use what we want to use, they can receive what they want to receive and everyone is happy. So let's build the pipes. I think no one knows which project survives and we are in this together. We are, of course, as individuals, it's not a collectivist uh, ideology, but we have uh, similar needs. So uh, I think uh, for electronic cash specifically, Bitcoin, Monero, Ethereum are all cypherpunk projects. There is no need to fight. And I think uh, it is more important to build these pipes to connect all these technologies together. I find it fascinating that I can take a collateralized loan um, on Ethereum. Of course, I need to use it with a condom <laughs> because Ethereum has horrible privacy, but it's still possible. I can do it without any KYC bullshit. I can just uh, do a few clicks on Aave and I, uh, and I can short fiat uh, and, or even print fiat actually. So that's, that's what we can do with these projects. Uh, Bitcoin has huge network effect. Why not use it? You know, I can use my Monero wallet. Uh, uh, they can use their wallet um, and so on. I have called this the law of cryptocurrency isomorphism, which means that it is not possible to ban only one cryptocurrency. You either ban them all or, uh, or none at all because we have these pipes. So uh, if it's banned, <laughs> we, can, we can switch between these currencies. So my call is uh, let a thousand anonymous projects bloom. I think all these projects that built and developed this cypherpunk dream should be welcome. And if we can do this, then uh, prepare to move the world. Thank you very much.